We welcome you again to another program. We are so thankful that we can be back here again. We will continue to look at our series, Redemption and Mission Impossible, and we are now at part eight. Today, we are going to look at a divine rescue plan, a divine rescue plan. Oh Lord, please bless us as we go into this program at this time. Now, I would like for you, if you enjoy this program and the contents thereof, you can share it with your friends, your family, and if you have not done it before, you can subscribe to our channel, A Divine Rescue Plan. I'm going to begin with a little experience that I had had when I was much younger. Barbados is my home. It is an exotic island in the Caribbean island chain. We are south of Florida and north of South America. It is nestled between the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. When I was much younger, I really enjoyed going to the beach. And, and arguably, we have some of the best beaches in the world. But some of, some of my colleagues may not think that I'm saying what is accurate in relation to their islands, but the reality is that is the truth. I would go to the, to the beach, not only to swim and have fun, but I would go also, when I was doing it back then, to enjoy snorkeling and spearfishing. At times, while snorkeling, I would see a trap called a fish pot, placed upon the seabed with fishes in it. This was constructed in such a way that the fishes had easy access into the fish pot, but when they were in, they would not have been able to find their way back out. They would be like sitting ducks, as it were, for whatever comes. Now, I would like for us to understand that setting traps is one of our adversaries' pastimes. Speaking regarding troubles that are going to burst upon our world, Jesus says in Luke chapter 21, verse 35, For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Paul himself spoke to Timothy about a snare. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 and 26, he says, In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance through the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So we notice that Satan loved to set snares. He loved to set traps. Is it really possible for us to have self-recovery from the snares of Satan? When we are taken captive by him according to his will, can we extricate ourselves from his clutches? When we think about a mouse trap, there are some mouse, mouse traps that kill instantly. Those are the ones with, with the springs. But then there are other mouse traps that have a very sticky glue upon them. The mouse is lured onto the glue by some bait. When its first leg is on the glue, it is stuck. The more it tries to escape, the more fixed it becomes onto the trap. Sin is a trap. The Bible says that the pleasures of sin are but for a moment, but the end is disaster. Sin is very attractive. It is very addictive. Once practiced, you are hooked. Watching thriller movies, for example, and reading exciting, uh, certain exciting books. So alter the minds that you lose your taste for the word of God. Now, you would notice that in all traps, usually, there's some type of bait to, lures, to lure the victims. Satan baited Adam and Eve with the thought that they could have an exalted position that God had not given to them. They dug a pit by listening to Satan, and they fell into that pit that they dug. And the condition humanity was placed in after sin was one that left him totally helpless to save himself. The Bible puts it this way. It says that they were driven out. This is seen in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. The question that can be asked is, what drove the man out? 
Was it God that actually drove, the, drove him out? Now, the, Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 59 says that our iniquities hide his face from us. Therefore, it is our own sin that shuts us out from the presence of God. It is not God's actions, but our own actions that have created an apparent impassable gulf between us and our Creator. Yet, God didn't leave us there. I say praise the Lord. When man sinned, when Adam sinned, he ended up in a position where he had absolutely no desire for God. Job pictures it this way in Job chapter 21, verses 14 and 15. He says, Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we shall serve him, and what profit shall we have if we pray unto him? Now we are told that, this is in the book Education, page 28, paragraph 1, a very important statement here. By sin, man was shut out from God, except for the plan of, of redemption, eternal separation from God, the darkness of an ending night would have been his. That is except for the plan of redemption. I thank God for the plan of redemption. You see, without the plan of redemption, we would have been left totally depraved. Eternal separation from God is total depravity, hopelessly committed to eternal ruin. This is the nature of humanity in Adam. But in Christ, God has rescued all men from total depravity. Praise the Lord. You have been rescued even when you did not know. You see, Adam left us absolutely helpless. Less. No son of Adam was in a place to help humanity, for we are all in the same boat, drifting upon the wide open ocean of existence without chart or compass and headed for the rocks of disaster. It took one outside of us, outside of our plight, outside of our curse, to help us. But in actual fact, being able to reach us where we were, where sin has sunk us. That is where the greatest problem was at. I don't know if you have heard about the 33 Chilean miners some years ago. On October the 13th, 2010, these 33 miners, Chilean miners, they were rescued after 69 days trapped underground. They were essentially buried alive in Chile's 121-year-old San Jose mine, which was notorious, really, for its long history of safety violations. The mine is literally an underground skyscraper with rooms and hallways and floors measured by their distance from sea level downward. Those 33 miners were trapped in a space around line level 90. And level 90 was 2,300 feet below the surface of the earth. And a fragment of rock that fell into the mine, created the collapse that trapped the miners inside, was 45 stories tall. It was later estimated to weigh 700,000 tons, which is twice the weight of the entire uh, Empire State Building. These men were totally absolutely helpless to save themselves. The only hope they had was their knowledge of the skill of those above and the care that those above had for them. Hence, their only recourse was to patiently wait and do nothing but stay alive. Now, in order to rescue them, what they did, they dug a pilot hole and uh, when they drill that hole, it enables them to send food and water and give air to the 33 miners who are buried underground. And after many attempts, they then were able to drill a hole wide enough to get a capsule the size of a man from the surface, surface to where the men were. Now, the capsule was connected above by a very strong cable. 
the cable was long enough to reach the place where the men were. Each man was able to board the capsule individually. And as long as they remained in the capsule, they were safe. Now, it is important to note that when that capsule came up, there was much rejoicing by those who were above. Each time uh, one of those miners came up, the families and the friends and the rescuers, they were rejoicing over those that came up from their pit below. That capsule represents Jesus Christ. And the capsule, Jesus Christ, has reached us exactly where we are. Regardless of whoever you are, regardless of whatever you've done, the capsule has reached you. You are important. You are special to God. Through sin, we were hurled into outer darkness. We were in the curse. We were in the pit. And Christ reached us exactly where we are, praise the Lord. He did not just let down a rope. Because if they had let down the rope, those that 2,300 feet to the Chilean miners, they would not have been able to hold on. So he did not just let down a rope to us. We would not have been able to hold on to the rope. The rope is his divinity, which connected him to the Father, while his humanity is the capsule that enclosed each and every one of us, which reached us exactly where we are. The capsule came exactly where you are and where I am in our anger, in our depression, in our distress, in our uncertainty, in our mistakes, in our temptations, our sins that so easily beset us. Christ is our capsule. He reached us exactly where we are. He reached you where you are. In him, we are safe. In him, we are saved. In him, we are connected. In him, we are on our way to the surface. You may look around and see only walls around you, but as long as you are in him, you have hope. Christ reach us where we are. He reach you exactly where you are. Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Yes, it is true that we were cast out into the curse. But the Bible tells us Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And again, he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, whom you know sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Bible therefore refers to Christ as the ladder. He's that cable. And therefore, he has enabled each and every one of us to climb that ladder so that we can go to the course above. In Desire of Ages, page 311, a wonderful book, paragraph 5, it says, Christ is the ladder that Jacob saw, the base resting on the earth, and the topmost rung reaching to the very gates of heaven, to the very threshold of glory. If that ladder had failed by a single step of reaching the earth, we should have been lost. But Christ, oh praise the Lord, reaches us exactly where we are. He took our nature and overcame that we, through taking his nature, might overcome. He has placed humanity on vantage ground, oh praise the Lord. Made in the likeness of sinful flesh. The statement continues. Romans chapter 8 verse 3. He lived a sinless life. Now by his divinity, he lays hold upon the throne of God. That is the cable. While by his humanity, he reaches us where we are. That is the capsule. He bids us by faith in him attain to the glory of the character of God. Therefore are we to be perfect even as our Father which is in heaven is perfect. Humanity in Adam is like a plane. The plane's purpose is to sail and move and go and take people from point A to point B. But when that plane crashed, there's nothing that it could have done in terms of its mission. It, is, it was good for nothing, washed up, 
completely. That is humanity in Adam. But humanity in Adam now has its place in Jesus Christ. In Adam, we are condemned. In Adam, we are dysfunctional. In Adam, we are inept, incapable of performing its purpose, our purpose, to suggest that we must repent and be saved so that we can be saved, or to suggest that we must repent and seek God to obey God in order to gain favor and a place in glory is like telling us to raise ourselves from the ground by tugging on our own bootstraps. Our problem goes even beyond that. We don't even have boots with straps. Our only source of help is Christ and his righteousness. Don't try to tug yourself up. Lift yourself to glory with your own bootstraps because you don't even have straps on your boots. We are told it's selected messages, but one, phase 331, paragraph one. It is impossible for man to save himself. He may deceive himself in regard to this matter, matter, but he cannot save himself. Christ, righteousness alone can prevail for his salvation. And this is the gift of God. This is the wedding garment in which you may appear as a welcome guest at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, praise the Lord. Let faith take hold of Christ without delay, and you will be a new creature in Jesus, a light to the world. In that capsule, you are safe to be saved. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I thank God that we don't have to try our effort best to be saved. I thank God that Christ came down. He is the capsule and he has embraced each and every one of us in him. Remember this, that capsule can only hold one at a time. You can be saved only as an individual. But Christ, he has reached you exactly where you are. You are safe to be saved. Trust in Jesus, surrender to him and all will be well with your soul. May God richly bless you.